Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Before we commence the panel discussion, we will have a short presentation on digital transformation and customer experiences by Mr. Sanjay Pathak, Associate Vice President Services, 3i Infotech Limited. In his role, he heads the healthcare and insurance practice responsible for solutions, consulting GTM strategy, domain com competency, and support key delivery deliveries and client relationship from a domain perspective. Mr. Pathak is an M-Tech from IIT Delhi. He has spent more than 16 years across IT industry. In his previous stint with ITC Infotech, he was working as head of insurance and healthcare solutions practice and was responsible for several strategy capability build, expansion of existing accounts and addition of new logos. Prior to this, he has also worked in the U.S. for over 11 years in the healthcare space. Please put your hands together for Mr. Sanjay Pathak. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I am audible. Thank you. So, if you uh, <coughs> read the newspapers today, there was a headlines about privacy. And uh, we started to think about privacy, whether it should be fundamental law in India. While going digital, talking about digital, taking this journey and use of the technology, we don't know when we step or cross the privacy borders. I'm happy that to today India started to take it a little seriously and trying to address the issue. So coming back to my main agenda, if you look at some of these icons, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? In, yep. More? There's more than social. So see, in my belief, they are the best in what they do. Some have mastered the digital space, some very good at the customer experience, some have excelled into the operational excellence, and some are leveraging data to get or do their business a little differently. So, if I had to talk, right, about, say, example, WhatsApp, who is one of a frequent user of WhatsApp? And uh, we'll all agree that's our parents, one of them, of course. So why is that so? First, yeah, they get to get connected with their grandkids and family. But other two factors which I think is ease of use and a smart piece of technology in their hands. So those are the contributing factors for how they use the WhatsApp or the social media for that. On the other hand, while talking about the baby boomers, I don't want to discount the millennials. And I think our morning discussions had revolved around it. So what is the difference between the two? While our parents are forgiving and they are patient. On the other hand, the millennials, they are impatient and, you know, not forgiving, if I may use. And one of the research done by Gartner shows that 82% of these millennials will walk away just after one bad experience. And that's a very huge stats here and that we should be very considerate about. So for insurance industry, the right shift here may not be the right place where they want to be. But as we said in the morning, we don't have options. The policy buyers or the policy holders constitute most of the millennials and a portion of Generation X. So let's you know, explore this further. So what is a digital customer of today and what it constitutes of? A rise of social media, connected device, definitely I'd put them under the center stage. So, and also, right, like all the industries today, be it insurance or any, now, all the strategy is revolving around the consumers. And I think this was laid down in the morning also by Mr. Vinay Gopal, where he said that though the customers was always the prime, but now that drift has started to happen in India and elsewhere too. So the consumers are hyper-connected, informed. You know, gone are the days where uh, we did not know how insurance works and uh, how things play around. They are peer-biased one of the very, very critical factor over here, right? And then on time and look for response 
time. And the, one of the other aspect which I touched based was they will move away. They'll walk away if they don't like what they see. And all this is leading to the fundamental change of how we do business. And Mr. Srinivasan, if I can quote him in the morning, he did say the traditional way of doing business today is changing. So let's talk a little bit about what's the need of the hour. Can an insurance in industry use the payment system, the buying patterns, wearables, the social interaction, or the IoT-based ambient intelligence? Can all this be leveraged to provide next best personalized action? Please note, personalized and action. And by action, what I mean is that it, it could be anything as simple as a product offer, as complex as servicing a claim, or a simple phone call interaction. Can all this be personalized? And why personalized? Because now we know who is our guard and whom we are following. It is the consumers. So what is this doing to the future of insurance? And I'm not talking 2030s, but I'm talking the near future, the near sight maybe two or three years. Will I be able to buy a car insurance policy and pay only for the miles I drive, not for a car which is sitting in my garage and eating dust? Can I get a discount for better driving? Similarly, can I get a discount for life policy when I renew it based on healthy habits that I maintain? We drive cars, but can it be leveraged further, not only to remind me of renewing an expiring policy, but also renews it on my behalf. And finally, we all use wearables today. What role it can play when we buy a health insurance policy or when it comes to servicing a health insurance policy? So these are some of the th key things. And if you look uh, you know, outside India, this, some of these are already coming to mainstream. And I bet in two or three years, this will be mainstream in India too. And I'm sure many of you all in my panel will agree that they might have already embarked or planning to embark some of this kind of journey. So I'll just want to pause and reflect back what India or the government of India or digital India is trying to do. And uh, I'm, I'm not talking about the schemes that have been laid by the governments. Those have been here for ages. And a lot of Jandhan Yojana, the Bhima Yojana, Fasal Yojana, those are already into play. But I'm here to talk about some of the platforms, some of the initiatives that are happening around. There are many, but uh, I'm just talking about a handful which I can correlate or draw some inspiration for the insurance industry. Uh, first one come to my mind is uh, e-saver or e of anything, right? How it, the government is going. So any agency, be it a state or government, other you know, departments like police and everything, they're all coming with some or the other form of uh, you know, portals. They're going digital. They're moving away from paper-based applications to provide some digital form like a portal and also are offering some kind of self-service. So what does it does you know, when it comes to insurance industry? How can I correlate? Once all this uh, you know, transformation has taken place, there will be a huge amount of consolidation that will happen, no doubt about it. But being an insurance com company or being in this industry, I bet there will be a lot of integration. Uh, there was an example for, of Surat uh, uh, that Mr. Uh, Sumanth discussed in the morning. That is one of the th key things that will happen, that kind of interaction I'm talking about. Maybe it could be for a regulatory or compliance reason that you integrate with them, or for a servicing purpose. As, as simple as it could be, you know, uh, to connect to a police department to validate whether a crime has happened or whether an accident really happened, what kind of you know, authenticity that holds. So those are some of the inspiration that I can draw from that e-seva initiative that is going on. Next, Aadhaar, we all know it is the digital ID of citizens of India, and then the DigiLocker. So can these two be leveraged, these two beautiful platforms here? Can we do something about our onboarding process, the EKYC that we are talking about? Can that be leveraged for endorsement or any servicing? And if uh, portability I have quoted here, little futuristic in nature, uh, the, uh, I'm assuming that um, soon all the policies may be required to be kept in the DigiLocker and it is pre-authorized, pre uh, authenticated documents. So I'm also assuming that uh, when it comes to portability from moving from A insurance company to B, it will become 
the DigiLocker can be leveraged to mi migrate or do that uh, tra transition. Finally, the cashless India, that will require expansion of your payment gateways. The newer payment methods like UPIs are coming and uh, the wallets are disrupting the market every other day. So that will definitely has to expand. And I also want to leverage this cashless uh, you know, platforms because this rewards loyalty, this is very less known in the insurance industry. It's been used in some other form, but not as popular as it is elsewhere. Uh, I would like to quote uh, Prime Minister of India, sometimes back, he made a very beautiful statement. IT plus IT equals IT. So meaning thereby, information technology plus Indian talent is equal to India of tomorrow. Or rather, personally, I would like to say digital India of tomorrow. And uh, friends, we are going there. And there's no turning back here. I can definitely see it that way. So this is a small snippet of uh, how the digital insurance, like our viewpoint, and we have all agreed, and we all know that customer or the tailored customer experience is the way forward. And uh, we talked, and there were several questions around big data, and I agree that, yes, a lot of what we do with respect to uh, customer experience has to be based or powered by actionable insights. These insights may come from you know, unstructured data like social medias, connected devices, IOTs of the world, or the structured data within the organization itself. You know, this data has a lot of power, you know. And as a, any industry, if you see, they may not have even exploited 40% of the power from this data. And I think we heard some of the initiatives plus some of the struggles with the use of the data in the morning session. And that's true. And with the changing landscape of technology, you know, uh, it may not be feasible or possible for each industry or each company, if I can narrow it down, to exploit the benefits from the changing landscape of the technology. And that's where the partner of the ecosystem comes in. Can this be leveraged you know, to answer some of the questions with respect to the changes in the technologies? And uh, as we go digital, right, what happens? See, your information is on a tablet, my phone is lying there, it can get stolen, right? So all th these are the concerns. And so far, how we were doing business today was that all the information or all the data that I holded was within my firewall. His that is history. The mainstream will be, you will be opening up your platforms as an API. Your data will be residing in any, any hands anywhere in the world. So in the wake of the threats that are happening, right, the wannabe, the security breaches that are happening, it is very, very important that we relook at this, anything that we are doing with respect to digital, like from a security perspective and privacy, of course. I, you know, the security which I think uh, should be, you know, in play or the question that we should be asking is to be, can I make my security smarter and scalable? Why smarter? Because other side of the world, not so good side of the world, you know, are looking for means and ways to exploit it. I'll give you one very good example. We talked about blo blockchain. Bitcoin, very good practical uh, and use, usable use case that is going on in the world. Before it could become mainstream, it is a kind of mainstream, but before we could really, you know, can be used by all the population across, the smart guys or, you know, the bad guys <laughs> were really, literally able to crack, and that's where the term ransomware comes in, right? If it was like six or ten years back, think about it. It was not possible. You lock your computer, you know, come ask for my money, and, you know, I'll grab your naked right there. But with bitcoins and the usage, that has been made possible. So we'll have to think about the security a little differently. And finally, all that we do has to be agile and customer focus. All the operations has to be that way. So this is like you know, our viewpoint, but from an org perspective, if I, like, you know, from an insurance company perspective, what will it take? So first thing and foremost thing is, in my mind, is an org level strategy. This strategy has to be backed on your mission and vision. You cannot be of the words where you say, hey, I'm doing something digital, and why? Just because, you know, my neighbor is doing it. That should not be, so, you know, that should not be the motto. Your motto should be aligning with your core theme, core business. 
Yes, it may require some cultural changes because uh, as in the morning also we talked about it, the, dis uh, the uh, digital way or will disrupt how we do the business trad traditionally. So some cultural adjustment has to happen within the organization. And finally, the management support. And in my point, of all these four points, this is very important. And reason for this is that proving an ROI for any business case or any transformation, digital transformation project is really hard. You know, hey, I want to put a chatbot in the web application. You know, now calculate the ROI. Not possible, right? Even like in my side of the world, you know, I'm coming from an IT background. So answering such question is really tough. And it will be. So your management has to trust and you know have that support with you. And on they should know that you know well educated of course. And at the same time they should know yes this all will pay back in some due time. So talking about some non-traditional shifts, right? Some examples here, and how you know they are doing things a little differently here. I'm not saying that these are the pioneers in any form in the digital or customer experience space, but these are the, some of the folks that try to do something differently. Uh, first example is Geo. 109 million subscribers in less than six months in telecom industry, right? <laughs> so they knew that, right? And you will all say that you know the freebie was one of the factor. Kind of I agree, but they knew, right? Like when they open the doors to 1.25 billion population of India, what will happen? And of course, something is let down free. People will flock, right? And they at the same time knew uh, that uh, uh, <clears throat> they have to do something differently. So what they did was they did something about the onboarding process. A SIM card can be given to you in less than two minutes. Compared to 45 minutes, of the paper-based project any competitors is doing. So no, no doubt in my mind, they have disrupted the telecom industry. And now the, you know, the big, big honchos of this world are now falling back and they're trying to you know, replicate the similar models, you know, integrating with Aadhaar, making onboard easy, and not the last but least, ma matching the you know, so service uh, pricing or the plans. Next one on my list is uh, Access Bank. Little different from the mainstream, but uh, little connected. So they launched a program called Active, where the, their objective was to use a fitness band to, as a wallet. What I like the most about them is that they used a piece of technology totally unrelated to their mainstream business, but to, totally embedded into the lives of their consumers. And they created a very good value added services here. So can insurance company draw some inspiration and do similar aspect? You know, you don't have to think that, yeah, it has to be mainstream. It could be anything that touches the life of the consumers. And finally, I have some examples from insurance industry, Apollo Munich, Berla Sun Life. So they are also doing tracker-based health tracking and providing you discounts for, you know, while it is renewal or an OPD visit, a pharmacy, uh, medical bills, uh, discount or any fitness center discount. So they kind of are laying down the foundation of loyalties and reward programs within Indian insurance industry. You know, I talked about a lot of things, business getting disrupted, newer models, the fintechs coming into the play, and uh, the technology landscape. All of this, uh, you know, has created a cloud of confusion among us, and we'll all agree to this. And where most of this, what is happening, has not proven their worth. They're still on their hype cycle, maybe. I may not be able to answer you know, all the questions around this, but what I can do, or rather invite you all, is uh, to our co-innovation practice, you know, where together we can try to answer some of these burning questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I just rest my case with a message that let's co-innovate. Thank you. Thank you all.